Hello and welcome, I'm Alas Gerajuk and you're watching Head to Head with UAE TV. As of today, there are five possible scenarios for the reintegration of temporarily occupied territories in Donetsk and Luhansk regions. This was stated by Oleksiy Danilov, Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. To talk more about these scenarios, we welcome to our studio today Vitaly Suzov, an analyst at the Donetsk Institute of Information. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Hello. So, as I said, Mr. Danilov mentioned five scenarios, but he did not unveil any details. Why do you think there was no specifics? I think that there are only two scenarios, uh, if we uh, remember uh, the statement of uh, Ministry of International Affairs, Pristaiko, he said only about two scenarios. I don't know what... Uh, uh, the sense of Danilo's scenarios, but Pristaiko said about only two direction. It's uh, uh, one on on the one hand, it's the Minsk Agreement. On the other hand, it's uh, some kind of Cyprus scenarios. Uh, when uh, uh, Cyprus scenarios. Cyprus scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, when uh, we uh, deny some Minsk Agreement and uh, try to build relationship with uh, unrecognized territory or uh, with Russia, but uh, without recognizing uh, this territory as part of Russia or uh, some um, independent republic. Meaning to hold the conflict, to freeze the conflict, so to say? Yes, and, uh, some kind of freeze the Well, conflict. without any recognition, uh, official recognition of that territory, but with some kind of development of ties and, so to say, relations. Uh, I think uh, the, the general goal of uh, Ukrainian administration, it's, uh, as uh, said uh, Zelensky in uh, he, his uh, election company, we have to stop shooting. And I think if uh, uh, they stop shooting, all people on the front line stop shooting, it uh, will be the uh, big success of Zelensky administration and uh, it will be enough for this administration because other scenarios uh, uh, is, uh, have some, um, uh, some uh, differences in, in implementation. But at the same time, I remember that Danilov mentioned that all of these scenarios, well, he was speaking about five, mm -hmm. uh, let's say five or maybe two, they should be beneficial for Ukraine. And these scenarios, the Cyprus scenario that you mentioned, uh, doesn't really sound like beneficial. Maybe, 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 um, well, the scenarios are different because we're now talking about the Sec National Security and Defense Council and not about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I think that the ministry now uh, is uh, more involved in the real process of uh, negotiation between Ukraine and uh, international be. partners. And I think the information of the Ministry of International Affairs is more confident. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I think uh, uh, regarding to your questions about the scenarios, I think uh, it uh, depends on uh, position. If we said about uh, hard uh, uh, level of conflict with uh, uh, many victims, uh, with wounded people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, freezing of this conflict is better than such kind of active uh, conflict. Aggravation of the situation. Casuals. Well, uh, now it didn't look like the situation is going to be escalated, but I do understand this point, of course. Uh, what about the Minsk, uh, the other scenario that you mentioned, the Minsk scenario? Uh, I think uh, some part of uh, Zelensky administration want to implement Minsk agreement, uh, but there are a lot of restrictions, uh, especially in internal policy, uh, because of uh, this all uh, Minsk agreement, uh, uh, they uh, have, have to be approved uh, through the parliament. And I'm not sure that even in uh, uh, pro-Zelensky majority, uh, they, uh, he had enough vo voices to support some radical steps uh, to, toward the Minsk process. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I try to explain. Uh, there are a lot of points, uh, red points, uh, I don't know, red line, as uh, some um, autonomy of this territory. 
as it could not be implemented in, uh, through, through the current parliament, even uh, through the current uh, uh, majority of deputies. Mm -hmm. uh, because they don't want to recognize uh, any autonomy uh, and uh, they want uh, to... Any autonomy of this, uh, of this territory, occupied tem temporary occupied territory. It's uh, one of the red line. Uh, but the, I think they will try to play with other things as a uh, regional status for Russian language uh, in the humanitarian sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do some steps uh, uh, to, um, towards uh, uh, Russia. To, yeah, to legitimize Russian language and culture on those territories. Um, well. On the other hand, I would like to also remember that Minsk process uh, now has become a little bit controversial in, in terms of its effectiveness, and many experts do claim that uh, after years of talks, uh, there has been very little done uh, in terms of Minsk agreement or almost nothing because Minsk agreements are being always breached by the Russian hybrid forces. And also another controversial thing is the order of paragraphs in this Minsk uh, agreement, in this Minsk Accords, because nobody knows what should be first, what should be second, what should be third, all these paragraphs. So uh, the uh, occupiers are demanding this uh, special status of Donbass, uh, but uh, nobody wants to uh, reinstate the territorial border of uh, Ukraine, um, which used to be uh, five years ago. Uh, but if we imagine that uh, well, potentially, I do realize that uh, probably Mr. Danilov uh, um, said about these five scenarios before the upcoming Normandy 4 summit. Uh, probably the reason for this is that uh, Volodymyr Zelensky is going to discuss uh, some uh, scenarios about reintegration uh, of Donbass with uh, the presidents of Germany, France and Russia. Well, um, do you think that if there are some other scenarios that we do not know, uh, maybe this information is classified, this is also a version, uh, do you think that Volodymyr Zelensky is going to discuss them at the Normandy 4 summit? I don't think that uh, he is have some uh, new scenarios uh, to resolve this conflict. Uh, uh, because uh, he said only about Minsk agreement and uh, about uh, this model of resolving this conflict, and I think he is not ready. Who, Mr. 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 Zelensky, Zelensky, uh -huh. to do any um, any step uh, that uh, want uh, to Russia, mm -hmm. that what Russia that uh, Russia wanted. Uh, and uh, I don't expect some. Um, big changes after this uh, meeting. After the summit. After this summit. In your yes. opinion, what is the appropriate way to reintegrate Donbass? Uh, we we heard, uh, heard, uh, heard a lot about the, uh, about the low efficiency of this Minsk agreements, but it's only instrument, tools, some tools. Uh, when the sides of conflict did, don't want to find some a resolution, uh, we can use Minsk agreement or London agreement or other agreement and cannot resolve it. Uh, and uh, I think uh, when um, the side on, on conflict uh, find some uh, uh, consensus or some balance, uh, it could be resolved. Uh, but uh, now uh, we see only some log and uh, nobody wants to do any consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, as you say, about border, about uh, withdraw the weapons. Uh, and I think uh, now, as I said in the beginning of our conversation, the best scenarios for the Lensky administration is uh, freezing the conflict and said that I uh, try to do something, I tried to do something, but Russia don't want to do any other steps. And that's why uh, even um, ceasefire will be the good decision in this situation. Of course, uh, uh, it's not solve the uh, bro range broad, uh, the broad uh, number of humanitarian problem as uh, pension, as social payment uh, and other. But uh, I think for Ukrainian society, even for European, European partners, it's very important to see 
strong ceasefire regime in Ukraine. Well, hopefully the ceasefire can be possible. And now just the last uh, question to address uh, to you, because we're running out of time. Um, I want to ask you about Russia's task um, for the upcoming Normandy 4 summit. Recently, Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs Sergei Rav Lavrov stated that Russia would persuade or require U Ukraine to have direct talks with the terrorist forces, well, with the Russian hybrid forces in the east of Ukraine. Could you please explain the international audience what is uh, so dangerous about these direct talks? Uh, I think uh, it's uh, these talks could have some uh, uh, not so positive consequences because uh, Russia is the main power in this region and uh, Russia fi finance this territory, Russia uh, sends the weapon, sends the uh, military uh, specialist and it's not uh, uh, is not realistic or it is not uh, any sense uh, to speak with people who is not so important as Russia. The Russia is main actor on uncontrolled territory. It will be some uh, way uh, to to uh, uh, Russia want to show that uh, th that uh, it has everything under control. That's that, what I want to yes, show. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, on this note, we have to wrap up this conversation, but I thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was Vitaly Sazov, an analyst at the Donetsk Institute of Information. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more with UATV.